Hello my HDEF friends, hold on one second while I cue these cameras. Sync them. Greetings unsettled souls and welcome to the correct views. <laughs> Sam I beat Ganji doing political commentary for the media speaks. On this fine Tuesday at 315 2016 in Ohio. And uh, what is so unbelievably important about this Tuesday? Well, let's see here. And he appoints it as 40 cranes. Are you ready? Really the most incredible airport. And then I get back to my plane, I land at LaGuardia with potholes all over them. Right? Fat cam. We're becoming third world. Let me screen you share for you low down friends. So here's the story, folks. So important, you gotta vote tomorrow. You gotta vote. If you have a headache, if you're dying, I mean, if you're dying, if you just went to your doctor, although that would cost too much because Obamacare, you know. We're repealing and replacing Obamacare. That is, that is absolutely wonderful news. I'll tell you what, friends, I went to the, uh, the Trump rally. And I'll tell you what, I'm staying up today to make America great once again, that is true. Now, do I necessarily believe that Donald Trump is the best man for the job? Um, no, I actually believe that's probably Gary Johnson, although Gary Johnson could not be more wrong on immigration. I voted for Gary Johnson last time, but I'll tell you what brings me in with Trump. I'll tell you what brings me in. The jobs. Plain and simple, the jobs. The man is right on jobs. The man is right on immigration. And a lot of you are going to say he's racist. He is not racist. Okay, I went to the Trump rally. And I'll be dead honest. Let me give you a bit of a synopsis. The, the rally is posted on my site. There's a bunch of videos of it. But let me address this real quick. Here's what I saw at the rally. 29,000 people in the IX Center. Out of that... Maybe a hundred were really not particularly nice people. So what I did is I went outside and talked to the very small percentage of idiot redneck Trump fans, of which exist. I also talked to some incredibly misguided Bernie Sanders fans, and um, anti I talked to the Black Lives Matter movement. Infowars. Alex Jones, I love you to death. At Infowars was filming this man freaking out. I talked to him. I told him before we began speaking that we didn't agree on politics, but I'm not seeing color here, and neither was he. And we had a talk. Did we agree? Uh, no, not really. But we were polite. It's on my site. The Trump is not racist. Repeat, Trump is not racist. He simply wants to make sure that we know who is coming into the country, why they are coming into the country, and if they are going to be productive citizens once they come into the country. And there is nothing wrong with any of that. He is not the devil. He is not racist. Okay, really. Now, are some of his supporters over the top? Sure, but you got to understand that's the way the media spins things. They will find the most bombastic, out of control, freaking out Trump supporter ever. And they will go ahead and make it sound like he is indicative of all Trump supporters. I've lost one light real quick, so let me let me push over here and quickly fix that. Um, they will act as though that is indicative of all Trump supporters, when it absolutely isn't. Okay, it's not in any way, shape, matter, or form. It never has been. But they will spin it that way. Because that's the way you word something if you're trying to get hits, if you're trying to get views. Um, it would have been better for me to have provoked the Black Lives Matter gentleman. Get a good fist fight, have him call me, not call him names. Ugh. This isn't a WWE. You talk to people. And if you listen to what it is that Donald Trump says when he's talking, then you will see quite clearly that he is not racist. I'll low deaf people. I'm going to be going uh, to the screen share a lot so that you guys can see what I'm reading. Uh, H deaf people over there, 
Um, you got fact cam right here. This is from Prison Planet. Kurt Nemo, Marxist professor, tells Canadians that Trump's message is racist, bigoted, and anti-democratic. Well, none of that is true. And the only people that could believe that would be people that don't really listen to what it is that Trump is saying, or people that have it in their head that no matter what the man says, they are absolutely convinced that he somehow must be wrong, racist, and evil because they need to believe in such things. Does anybody trust the mainstream media? No, I didn't think so. Henry Gohru, a Marxist professor of cultural studies, told CBC that pseudo-candidate, again a smear, Donald Trump has used celebrity culture and racism to catapult himself to the top of the race for presidency. Perhaps celebrity culture? I mean, to be real, I'm not, I don't think Trump is the best thing since sliced bread. He's using his popularity. I think he would even say to some degree that that's true. Racism? No. Absolutely wrong. Not racist. Guru dismissed Trump's followers as uniformly racist, untrue, I'm one of them, I would know, and says that the candidate has tapped into a amorphous anti-establishment sentiment prevalent on what he described as an isolated political fringe. No, these are people who want America to be Americans. We don't want to be global citizens. We, we want people like Obama out of office, people like Bush out of office, people like Chris Christie never in office, because we don't want to harm the global community. But we are not, and will not, be beholden to them. That is why we love Trump. We are not a political fringe, and we are not racist. The Republican Party has been telling these people the fringe element of the white ring to be angry. No, we are already angry because you have mailed our, sent our jobs away without reason, without merit, and without recourse and think that you're going to get away with it. I feel that the people are feeling relatively isolated and they don't have a language to identify the problems. No, we do have a language and it is not that we are settling for Donald Trump. Donald Trump speaks for us because Donald Trump is right. Uh, he is correct when he says millions of Americans are politically isolated and their opposition to the state and political class is primarily visceral. The failure of many, it goes on, to fully grasp issues and problems, however, is largely the result of establishment control of the mass media, although this is beginning now to change. It says Trump is not an ideological candidate. Trump is confusing the powers that be and the uh, commemorate because he does not neatly fit into one of the two tidy, dichotomous ideological boxes, that be the Republicans and Democrats, that serious partisan candidates are supposed to conform to, that is, pander to. According to Danny Phillips, Trump is not primarily an ideological candidate. That means he doesn't subscribe to just one view. Phillips describes Trump's political stance as economic nationalism, which is good, a political movement opposed to globalism, which is good, and neoliberal free trade, which is bad, because it is not free trade, but rather crony crap capitalism, that is, uh, paying the lobbyists, and monopolization of markets established and enforced by the state. A reaction to the domination of control of the economy by and the benefit of international banking cartels and corporations, enforced by a privately held Federal Reserve, of course, which is ripping us off, the government agency more or less created the Trump political movement. So, I mean, you've got to understand here. It says the lesson of Ron Paul's failed presidential. Well, let, <clears throat> let's go into this real quick. The ideal candidate would be a libertarian along the lines of Ron Paul. The political class, however, has successfully marginalized libertarians. Look up how they treat, uh, cheated Ron Paul of a legitimate win in Iowa. And more or less kept them out of national political arenas. Um, as in evidence by the almost complete absence of libertarians in Congress. The lesson of Ron Paul's failed presidential campaign is that the establishment will sabotage any effort by a liberty candidate to seek the White House. The so-called Tea Party serves as a primary example of the establishment's successful efforts to destroy and render harmless the liberty movement, a movement that has its origins subsequently betrayed by Republicans and their operatives in Ron Paul's 2009 populist Boston Tea Party that rallied against the establishment. 
So the point is that when you do things properly, you tend to get hosed, and we're sick of it. And we are supporting Donald Trump, even though we don't agree with them on everything. Let's face it, Donald Trump is painfully wrong on all matters that have to do with Snowden, the Fourth Amendment, and uh, that, that, that kind of thing. I have concerns as to whether or not <clears throat> he will allow states to decide marijuana laws. I hope he does. He's not the perfect candidate, but he is, in fact, not the lesser of two evils, because he is not evil. And what he wants to do for jobs, what he wants to do for our economy, and what he wants to do for our future are, in fact, the exact things that need to be done if we are to have any kind of future whatsoever here. So I'm hoping that all of you in Ohio, <clears throat> my home state here, that are listening to me, will be so wise as to take my advice and vote for Trump. And if you really don't like the man, then at least make sure we don't get stuck with Rubio, Kasich, or um, Lion Ted Cruz, Little Marco Rubio. I'll tell you why, too. Because if you hate Trump, you can at least vote for him to get him in over the failures of Rubio and Cruz and Case Come Case it's just in favor of NAFTA. Now I was somewhat willing to accept such things as Kasich. I was even mildly hoping maybe he would get VP because he hasn't done so bad in Ohio. But he's in favor of NAFTA. If you're in favor of NAFTA, I'm sorry, you do not get my nor any thinking person's vote. Uh, moving on with this is Trump racist BS, which I can't even believe that I have to address. Let's check this out. The racist Donald Trump. Ben Carson, I will serve as an advisory position in the Trump administration. Now keep in mind <clears throat> that uh, Ben Carson is in fact a black man. So the ever-racist Ron uh, Donald Trump has chosen a black man. Listen. In my discussions with, with Donald Trump, uh, he does love America, and he does want to be successful. Listen to this. And he will surround himself with very good people. And will one of them be Dr. Ben Carson? I will be uh, doing things as well, yes. In, in the administration. Look at this. Uh, certainly in an advisory capacity. That's been determined? You, when, when you sat down with him, that was discussed? Yes. And, and you really want to tell us, would it be advisory towards medicine? Towards and he won't say whether it's a uh, um, cabinet position or not. But I, I really think if Donald Trump was racist, the first appointee that he would say he's going to make as an advisory positional member would not be the black man, Ben Carson. But again... It's sticking with who Trump is. I have people telling me that Trump's not going to stay true to who he is. Well, let me tell you something. It seems to me that Donald Trump has said that he is an anti-establishment person. He's probably going to need somebody with a little bit of experience to be the VP. But as soon as he starts picking people to run with him, who does he pick? People that are not career politicians, which is good news. Ben Carson is a brain surgeon. An African-American who has done great things with his life, overcame a lot of anger issues when he was younger, and... Has, as a brain surgeon, saved the lives of thousands of people, and he will be a great asset when, revol when removing things like Obamacare and bringing them under some kind of normal cost. <laughs> Monday on Newsmax's TV, the Steve Malzberg Show, former Republican presidential candidate and Donald Trump supporter Ben Carson said he is determined he will be in an advisory capacity in the Trump administration. So... Now we have a black man who's going to be brought in, and they're going to say that Donald Trump is racist because he hired a black man. And the black community will be too ignorant to actually stand up and realize, hey, he's not racist. Like, they said the same thing about Bush. I hated Bush, but they never gave Condoleezza Rice the credit that she deserved when he gave her such an important position. Excuse me, you didn't hear about it at all. Well, this is from Ron Paul. Loretta Lynch, the government war on free speech. Now, this ties into the whole little mini Trump update, and I'll tell you how, even though that uh, Ron Paul and Donald Trump obviously have differences. Who do I think is better? Ron Paul, by far, but he isn't running. And uh, I don't, Gary Johnson is so wrong on the border that I have an issue with him on that. And, uh, I mean, there's still time for Trump to lose my vote. 
But even though I do like Johnson more this cycle, I think I'm going to vote in favor of jobs. <clears throat> I'm going to vote for Trump. <clears throat> it's 4.30 here, and I promise you when the election, when the, uh, when the polls open, Christelle, my wife, and I are going to go and vote for uh, Mr. Trump. During her appearance before the State Judiciary Committee this week, Attorney General Loretta Lynch admitted that she asked the FBI to examine whether the federal government should take legal action against so-called climate change deniers. So, this is another issue where Donald Trump is 110% right. You've got Hillary Clinton out of here. Let me go ahead and see if I can get a screen share going on this. You've got this idiot, uh, fact cam for you high def people, you've got this idiot Hillary Clinton out here promising to take jobs away from people. And, I mean, literally, let me see if I can find it. Maybe I didn't save it. She says that she is going to be shutting down coal plants, and she's bragging about it. Well, the interesting thing is that man has been proven to have not been warming the planet for between 15 to 18 years. Their data is so skewed that there are questions as to whether or not the last 50 years haven't just been lied about by the areas that they chose to call the warming analysis segment, where they're analyzing how much the climate supposedly warmed. Um, it's a crooked business, friend. Plain and simple. Global warming is a lie. Man is not warming the planet. While Attorney General Lynch is not responding to any criminal acts committed by climate change skeptics, instead, she is, says, it says, is responding to requests from those frustrated that dissenters from the alleged climate change consensus have successfully blocked attempts to create new government programs to fight climate change. In other words, they want to pick your pocket, and they want you to be okay with it. They want to pick your pocket so that they have greater control over you and a greater income for themselves. And never mind the fact that the entire basis that they're doing it for is that of a lie. Man is not, has not, will not, cannot warm the planet. This is simply normal activity that the planet has always done, skewed and sold to an incredibly dumbed-down population. Um... If successful, the climate change sensors could set a precedent that could silence numerous other views. For example, many people believe the argument over whether we should audit and then end the Federal Reserve is settled. Therefore, the deniers of Austrian economics, that is to say common sense, are harming the public by making it more difficult for Congress to restore a free market monetary policy. So, shouldn't the government silence Paul Krugman? The climate change censorship movement is part of a larger effort to silence political speech, which again is another reason to vote for Mr. Paul, uh, Mr. Trump, because Donald Trump is right about climate change and Donald Trump is on the right side of free speech. Other recent examples include the IRS's harassment of Tea Party groups, as well as that agency's fortunately thwarted attempt to impose new rules on advocacy organizations. So what they're trying to do here is uh, move along where Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Roosevelt have done before, where they can limit free speech for anything they want. He writes, today many neoconservatives are using the war on terror to justify crackdowns on free speech, increase surveillance of unpopular religious groups like Muslims, and increase government control. And again, I think the Muslims do need to be monitored so that we know if they are peaceful or not, but that doesn't need, mean they need to be silenced and not allowed to speak, clearly. Um, moving on to the last of our little Trump update here. Uh, ICE, 100, and this is from uh, WashingtonExaminer.com, 124 illegal immigrants released from jail, later charged in 138 cases. Murder cases. So you are letting criminals, illegal aliens out, and they are committing 134, 138 crimes for 124 illegals released, and they are murders, not just like, you know, parking violations. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement have revealed that 124 illegal immigrant criminals released from jail by the Obama administration, administration since 2010 have been subsequently charged with murder. The Center for Immigration Studies, and there is a link right here. I'm going to screen share for my low def. Um, 
The Center for Immigration Studies report on the data from ICE to the General Judici- so the Senate Judiciary Committee added that the committee is not releasing the names of the murder suspects. Of course not. Protect the illegals. The criminal aliens released by ICE in these years, who had already been convicted of thousands of crimes, are responsible for a significant crime spree in American communities, including 124 new homicides. Inexplicably, ICE is choosing to release some criminal aliens multiple times, said the report written by CIS's respected director of policy studies, Jessica V. Vaughn. Jessica M. Vaughn. So, you break a crime as an American citizen. You're done. You're hosed. But if you are an illegal immigrant, you can damn near get away with anything and still be left out. And, obviously, you can go and murder someone before we finally pick you up. She added that 75% were released due to court orders. Again, the courts being on the wrong side of the law, which is why we don't trust them. Or because their countries wouldn't take them back. So if the country doesn't take back the criminal that we have, who probably snuck into the country, then they should be free to kill us all. What's more, her report said that the 2014 ICE released 30,558 criminal aliens, who have been convicted of 92,347 crimes, and only 3% of those have been deported. 30,000, almost 31,000 people have committed 92,000 crimes. That's like three crimes per person. So let's let them out. Her analysis is the latest shocking review of Obama's open border immigration policy. So what you've got here is, once again, the worst president ever, on the wrong side of history, which he has been for most of recent memory. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor. i got a few more stories to get to, but you, you, you are low def, high def, are going to want to go ahead and check out Sticker Junkie. Why? Because when you go to StickerJunkie.com, you're going to find a great, great job having been done on your stickers. And you're going to find out that you're getting a discount if when you check out, you put the correct views or correct views in your checkout. Let them know you heard about it here. You're going to get the best price ever. (coughs) (coughs) Excuse me. (coughs) Excuse me. Zero Hedge, a nervous NATO fears Turkey, Russia, may soon go to war. It says if you want to take it, let's face it, you must because that's why you're here. We wouldn't put too much faith faith in today's announcement of a Syrian ceasefire, which actually hasn't done so bad. Although the deal calls for a cessation of hostilities on Saturday at midnight, this is a bit dated, you shouldn't expect the Russians and the Iranians to halt their advance on Aleppo or otherwise, and you shouldn't expect Turkey to stop shelling the Azaz Corridor in a largely transparent effort to keep the supply lines to the rebels open, which again is funding terrorism. The stakes are simply too high, as we've explained exhaustively, when he's not completely right on this. The fall of Aleppo to Hezbollah and the Russians would fall, for all intents and purposes, to the end of the rebellion. Assad would once again control the bulk of the country's urban backbone in the West, and that would mean his rule was efficiently restored. And it says, uh, the situation was such that an accidentally fired missile or submarine captain losing his control would have been enough to trigger World War III back in 1962. And it said Turkey has done its part in recent weeks to ratchet up the uh, the problems, and especially by shooting down a Russian aircraft. Um, and it said, should Turkey be responsible for escalation, say officials in both Berlin and Brussels, and Ankara would not be able to involve the, invoke the NATO treaty. In other words, because Turkey is causing so much of the problems in the area, they won't be able to use the help that NATO normally offers to bail them out. In other words, they need to quit cold turkey. Uh, sorry, Turkey, NATO's not going to be there to help you. Uh, the man who gained no traction, and I'm pretty sure the reason that this man will never be president is because he actually is a good man. That would be uh, Huckabee. Uh, Mr. Huckabee is a wonderful man, and in America today, you can't be a wonderful man and get anywhere. Listen to this. Uh, Prison Planet. Former governor of Arkansas Mike Huckabee told Fox News this morning that Donald Trump's success represents a peaceful overthrow of the government and that the Republican establishment should be glad it's being achieved with ballots and not bullets. Huckabee, who has not officially endorsed Trump, 
told Fox and Friends that people in Washington need to recognize the reason that Trump is winning is because his supporters feel like people in Washington have helped them lose and they're sick of it. Feel like it? No, it's absolute truth. The donor class runs the political environment in this country, it says, and people are waking up to that, and they are tired of it, added the formal presidential candidate. That's what this election is largely about. It's an overthrow of the government. We ought to be glad that it's a peaceful revolution with ballots rather than bullets, said Huckabee, adding that the Trump phenomenon was a political revolution in the Republican Party and in the country. This is just common sense America waking up and realizing that the only way we are going to have any kind of liberty and hope in this country is to elect people who think as Donald Trump does and cares about bringing fairness and jobs back to the country, is what he's saying. In other instances, countries have revolted in the most violent ways. And fortunately, that isn't happening here, although I fear that could be the case if the uh, GOP tries to cheat us out of Trump during the convention. <clears throat> Huckabee accused, and rightfully so, the Republican establishment of bedwetting over Trump by treating his voters as stupid, while trying to select a presidential candidate rather than let the American people elect one, which of course is the way it's supposed to run, and we want Trump. The former governor said that Trump supporters were coming out in droves to support him because they're angry at the very establishment who is going nuts because Donald Trump is doing well, and they don't get it, and that's part of the problem. And Huckabee made that comment in response to Paul Ryan and Mitch O'Connell forcefully denouncing Trump over the David Duke controversy. And there is no freaking David Duke controversy. He has repeatedly said that he does not want support from David Duke. And friends, that brings us to the dumb of the day. Clinton and Bernie Sanders, who could not be more wrong. The Telegraph, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders accused Donald Trump of inciting violence. Now, let me go ahead to my site real quick. Here is where, let me go to screen share. Here is where um, I can tell you from firsthand experience. I was there. Trump does not in any way incite violence of any kind. Now, this is 56 seconds long. I want you to listen to it because this is exactly what you hear when you go to a Trump rally. So let's, let's see how he is inciting violence here. Hold on, let me read. Need to promote their own political Here we go. Stop listening. Rallies by using them as an opportunity to promote their own political messages. While they certainly have the right to free speech, this is a private event paid for by Mr. Trump. We have provided a safe protest area outside the venue for all protesters. If a protester starts demonstrating in the area around you, please do not touch or harm the protesters. Oh. the protester this is a peaceful rally or harm the protester this is a peaceful rally in order to notify the law enforcement officers of the location of the protester please hold a rally sign over your head and start chanting trump 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 ask the people around you to do likewise until the officer removes the protester thank you for helping us make america great again to me like a speech or a recorded message that would in any way incite violence. Um, no. And that is why this wins the dumdy of the day. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders accused Donald Trump of inciting violence. The Democratic presidential candidate Senator Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton condemned Donald Trump and accused him of, again, inciting violence, which we just proved to you wasn't true. In a town hall meeting broadcast on Monday, on CNN, a Democratic presidential candidates Bernie, give it to me, free Sanders, even though we're bankrupt, 
and Hillary Clinton both said Republican frontrunner Donald Trump is inciting violence at his rallies, as you can tell by the peaceful message that he gave. Both cited Trump's offers to pay legal fees for a man who was videotaped punching a demonstrator. That's because um, Donald Trump had made a joke that some bonehead took seriously. And uh, you know what? He probably shouldn't have offered to pay, but he was you know, trying to be nice. Now he's paying for it. No good deed will go unpunished. Sanders specifically condemned Trump's comment that the demonstrators are Bernie Sanders supporters and that Sanders needs to get his people under control. Well, I interviewed the protesters in Cleveland, and they were largely Bernie Sanders supporters. As a matter of fact, you can tell that there's something screwy going on here because nobody is supporting Hillary Clinton. Everybody I know is Trump or Hillary. So this notion that, excuse me, Trump or Sanders, um, I really do believe, and I don't like him, that Sanders is being held down or otherwise skewed here because this doesn't make any sense. Do you know any Clinton supporters? If you do, leave a comment. I don't, I don't think you do. I think there's something going on here. I hesitate to say this because I really don't like to disparage public officials, but Donald Trump is a pathological liar. No, Donald Trump is somebody <coughs> who has spoken more truth than Bernie Sanders has ever heard. He also said that protesting is a right, although he does not believe in disrupting other people's meetings or rallies. And he said he has no control over whether his protesters protest. And how? Well, the reason you're getting the dumdy of the day, you dumbass Bernie Sanders, is you have just said that you are holding Donald Trump responsible for what his followers do. And yet you are saying that you are not responsible for what your followers do. That is why you're getting the dumdy of the day, you stupid ass. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. If you would like to donate to the show, uh, get a hold of me at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards that better show that I want to give you. Uh, I would like to do this full time, but it would involve me leaving my job to do it, so I would need to find a way to get some income in. I mean, the show is growing. We've interviewed um, vice presidential candidates here. We've, we've been on InfoWars. We've been on Prison Planet. We've done two documentaries, one on Bilderberg, one on Paul, uh, uh, Paul Revere. We've discovered the uh, Trump rally. We're about to probably be getting into the GOP convention. I need your help, people. I really, really need your help because all this costs a lot of money. Good night, friends. God bless and thank you for listening. Please hit share and please hit subscribe.